Hey everyone, it's Miss Seward. Today we're gonna to be learning about section 3.1, which is on specialist versus generalist species. The learning objective for today is that you can identify differences between generalist and specialist species. And the essential knowledge that you're gonna be gaining is basically what specialist and generalist species are, how you can tell the difference and some of the advantages and disadvantages that each has. Then the suggested skill you're going to gain is practicing the ability to explain environmental concepts and processes. So when we're talking about animals, there's kind of two different categories that we can put them into. And this is going to be specialist species versus generalist species. So specialist species are going to be animals that have a smaller range of tolerance or narrower ecological niches and this makes them more prone to extinction. Now they're more prone to extinction because they have very specific food requirements. And then they, this makes them less able to adapt to new changes. So a perfect example of a specialist species is going to be a panda. Pandas are specialist species because they have a very specific food requirement. They only eat bamboo. And so this means that if we have a changing environment where potentially maybe something comes in and wipes out bamboo in an area, panda are going to go extinct very fast because that is the only food that they eat. So they're not able to adapt to those changing conditions. So we can see on this graph here that they have a very um, narrow niche because they need very specific conditions in order for them to thrive. Now this is gonna be compared to a generalist species and generalist species um, have a larger range of tolerance because they have a broader niche. And this makes them a lot less prone to extinction and they're able to be invasive. So they can come into an area and thrive and take over some of the organisms that maybe had already been there. And this is because they have a broad food requirements and they're very high in their ability to be adaptable. And a perfect example of this is going to be a raccoon. As we can see in the graph here, their niche is much wider than a panda. And this is because they can eat basically almost anything. Raccoons are able to eat plants, they can eat animals, they can eat grubs, they can eat your trash and still thrive. They're able to go and live out in the forest in the Cascades and they can live right in your backyard and do just fine living in both of those areas. So they're able to be very adaptable to changing things around them. If their forest comes and becomes more houses and urban areas, they can do just fine with that. So they're less likely to go extinct because they can get the resources they need from a variety of sources. The panda cannot do that. Panda is going to be in trouble if urbanization comes and wipes out its bamboo forests. So we have this diagram here that kind of shows you uh, what I talked about and a little bit more. So one of the things that I want you to be aware of is we categorize animals as specialists versus generalists, but it is a spectrum. I'm giving you the very specific examples on both sides. However, you do have organisms that kind of fall like in between here, but we do still tend to lump them into either of these categories. So as I talked about, a specialist species is going to be a panda. Another very great example is gonna be a koala. They can only eat eucalyptus, so they have a very specific niche. So as I said with specialists, they have a narrow niche. They are less adaptable because they have very specific needs. They have very specific resources that they can eat. So if there are changing conditions, they're going to be very much impacted by those changing conditions. However, an additional note is because they are able to like really thrive in this niche where they're at, they have an advantage when conditions are more constant. They have evolved for millions of years to be very good in this one niche. And so if it's constant, they're going to be thriving. Now, generalist species, like I gave you the example of the raccoon, we also are going to have rats as an example. Just like raccoons, they can thrive in the forest and they can also thrive in a house in your backyard. They are going to be able to eat pretty much anything. So they are a general species because they, again, have that broad niche. 
They're adaptable to a lot of different environments. Wherever you put them, they're probably going to be just fine. So they are less likely to go extinct. And this is because they eat a wide variety of resources. Or they eat a wide variety. They have a variety of resources in all the things they need. And they have a high tolerance to changing conditions. So the general species are going to have the advantage when conditions are changing and not so stable. So your practice FRQ for today is going to be identify one characteristic of specialist species and explain how that characteristic makes them more likely to become extinct than generalist species. So that's going to be your practice FRQ 3.1. And these were your notes for 3.1 on specialist versus generalist species.